Hello and welcome to Focus on Liberia. This is the Literary Hour. My name is Dennis Jai and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight, our topic is transforming Liberia through the arts. We want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. We are glad to have you. Uh, happy Friday. I'm joined by my co-host, Ms. Jackie Sire. Jackie, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Janice. I'm happy to be here. We're also glad to have Professor Dr. K. Moses Nambe, who's joining us for the first time on the Literary Hour. Prof, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Prof is muted. All right, once again, Prof, welcome to Focus on Liberia. If you can unmute your line. Hello. Can I be heard now? Yes, a okay. little more volume. Uh, volume? Yeah, that's good. Something wrong with my volume? Okay. No. Okay. All right, we want to welcome all our viewers to this exciting literary hour. It's Friday. We want to say happy, happy Friday to all our viewers across the globe. Share the link and let's have a discussion on the topic transforming Liberia through the arts. Uh, it's Friday. Uh, for, for some, it's payday Friday. I don't know what it is for you, Jackie. It's not payday. <laughs> Okay, our topic is uh, transforming Liberia through the arts. So those are we have two major uh, words in there: transforming and arts. So let's begin by first saying uh, transforming Liberia through the arts. What does that mean? So let's start with the word transform. But before we get to that, let me welcome and uh, Professor K. Moses Nambe. Uh, just your opening comment before we even start the show. This is your first time on the literary hour yeah i i mean as i always say i'm i'm always happy to join uh you all fol on every major program and literature sometimes people tend to downplay it but literature is one of the cardinal um concepts cardinal activities in a society. And so the fact that you all are focusing on that gives me great pleasure because literature is my first baby. And that's his baby. If you were in Liberia, you would know that really his baby. Jackie, your opening statement. Um, so we're talking about the arts for development and it's, it's quite a very interesting topic because we know that development refers to the ability of the government to raise the well-being of, of its people. And many people tend to overlook arts as an instrument of development. So I think this discussion will be a very good one when we're talking about transforming Liberia through the arts. And when we talk about arts, we're talking about all arts, all kinds of arts, uh, literature, music, audio visual arts, whatever. So, so uh, I'm very happy to discuss that today. Great. And those are the two I, I spoke about earlier, transforming and then the art. So let's first start with transforming. Uh, what is that and why does Liberia need to be transformed? And if we are transforming Liberia, what is it that we're going to transform before we even get to the arts? And uh, let me start with you. Uh, with me? Yes. With okay. The, yeah, those okay. two words I would break down first. Okay. Now, there, there, there are a couple of things you need to think about when you think about transforming. The first is you need to transform your mind and your heart. And that goes then to the physical transformation. And once the individual who will carry on certain actions is transformed, 
then we can see the productivity by how the environment of that individual is also transformed. So when we are talking about uh, transforming uh, Liberia through the arts, we are posing the question, uh, what is art or what is a concept called art and how can it be used to transform society? Uh, I think Jackie made the point by um, by listing a few of the things as far as the arts are concerned. We talk about words. We talk about set of lyrics, talk about music then. We talk about drama, which uh, transitions into uh, the film industry. We even talk about paintings, you know, drawing and all those things. So in other words, the arts will refer to a complexity of things created by the human mind that drive passion for action, that drive passion for action. So talking about passion before I, I leave the floor for a while, talking about passion, we are talking about things that tear us up. You see, literature uh, focuses on the mind and the heart, the emotive essence of an individual. So when you are stirred, whether out of anger or out of sadness and what have you, you go out and do what you have to do. It is the arts that tear you up. You, you know, Prof, lots of time um, people um, don't see the art, the early arts as um, instruments of, of um, development. I, I feel that the, the arts, they are very necessary for, for social cohesion mm -hmm. because it's through the arts that really you're, like you say, it's, a, it's emotive. You know, you, you put your, your emotions out. You know, they are the vessels through which members of the society can affirm the identity, you know, mm -hmm. and people don't see, you can collectively have shared goals through art. You know, you can, you can um, tell the story of a country mm -hmm. through art. You know, you can teach through art, you know, uh, uh, and um, a lot of time people say, oh, you know, I mean, it's just people dancing, mm -hmm. you know, tourists come, you know, or somebody turning a piece of wood, mm -hmm. you know, sculpture, you know, and they think think of the emotions that went through that carving. The carving tells a story, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and a lot of people don't see that. Um, I, I think the arts, are, they are very necessary for development and they reflect the culture through, through which uh, uh, um, we are supposed to affirm. So I think that they are very necessary for development. Sometimes the, the, the lessons are insidious. They, they go in quietly. Yes. And because they go in quietly, not too many people pick them up, yes. pick the lessons up. And that is why those who are in the, the business of the arts, they have to have or create a loud uh, phone. They have to create a loud voice to be able to get things out into the public. And before I, I leave the stage, I want to also point out that this is true of reading because that is one of the channels through which the arts are expressed, reading. If you tell a society or if you talk about society and say that the society is not a reading society, then it means that you are not creating yes. the kind of passion for the reading. Yes. That is why, as I said earlier, that FOL, what is doing uh, by bringing arts, the arts to the fore is very much important. We have to continue to sound the importance of these things so, so that you don't even, maybe you don't want to blame the society. You want to blame, you have the knowledge and skills, but are not getting to the point of uh, explaining yourself. You've got to be able to explain yourself so much so that people will take interest in what you are doing. Yeah, and people take it with them, you know. Uh, um, 
when we talked about the first phase, we also talk about how the griots brought the culture with them through singing and praise songs, you know, because if you're fleeing, you're leaving everything behind. Mm -hmm. What you're taking with you is your culture, your way of doing things, you know? So, so um, uh, I, 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 I was thinking that, you know, they say politics, uh, I mean, the identity consists of anchoring the past in a viable future, right? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, the viable, the viable past, you're anchoring the future in a viable past. Yes. So even thinking that, you know, I mean, you wouldn't say viable in a sense because of the, of the conflict. But if you look at it, you can find a commonality in that, in that migration, right? And migration becomes the common thread. And what are you taking with you, with you when you're going? You are taking a culture, you know, with you. Yeah, and, and, and people say, oh, culture, culture, you know, and I always say, you know, uh, uh, um, it's, it's important because if you talk about heritage, you have natural heritage, right? You have Lake Piso, you have Mount Nimba, right? Those are resources, right? Natural resources, you know, the natural part of the heritage. But then you have the culture, which is the way of doing things, right? It contributes to a sense of identity. Mm -hmm. Sculpture or painting, it, it it's it, it it grounds you in this in this culture. So the heritage of Liberia, like like most other countries, you know, is diverse, is multiple, uh, 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 is is dynamic. You know, then you add identifiers, you know, like gender, religion, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but 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 there's an overarching identity. We are Liberians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think I think the, the question comes is what does it mean to be a Liberian? What is this Liberian culture? That we talk about so yeah so i think i think i think the arts tell you like achieve say it tells you where the rain started to beat you mm -hmm. so the arts say you are liberian let me show you what it is so you're right when you say that arts they are emotive because because they move you you mm -hmm. know they may be telling a story and sometimes the story might be silent but it conveys meaning yeah. Something to you. And, and, and probably before you come here, I want us to take some time to really talk about what this art is. Because what art can do, unless we, we show appreciation or we even recognize what art is, we may not have to, uh, we, we may not see its potential and the force that is behind it. So let's take some time and talk about art. We're talking about music, and we can even give examples of music. You talk about storytelling as part of the art. Stories, folklore that are being passed down from generation to generation. Sometimes you listen to a folklore and it tells you about, you know, I'm getting some feedback here. So let's take some time and go into art one at a time and see that power of what it conveys and what it's capable of doing. Let's start with literature, which uh, Professor Nambu has been writing for so long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The, the, no, the, the, the thing about the thing about literature, uh, a simple definition I often give about it is that literature is life. And there are so many things that are packed in life. You also have to understand that literature is a confluence of disciplines. Literature is a confluence of disciplines. The story you get into a class and read or talk about, the song you hear, the way people walk, the way people talk, even the gesticulations and all those things, those are part and parcel of what? Of literature. So literature, in other words, is a, a broad concept. And at the center of literature as a course of study is the emotional essence without feeling we are nobodies yeah. you go to watch a play or you hear a play and a tear begin to stream down your cheek that is the emotion that is there in you or you are watching a show on you are watching people doing certain things until you laugh out loud your, your stomach begins to what your sides begin to ache and all those things. <laughs> yes. so many things that you talk about anger, you talk about joy, you talk about comfort, you you talk about restiveness and all those things. Those are part and parcel of, of what? Of, uh, of, course, of literature. So that is why I say that literature is life itself. Literature is a confluence of 
a number of disciplines. And, and, and Jackie, how can that literature now, we're talking about transformation, how can that literature transform a society like ours, Liberia? Okay, let's 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 talk about healing first, right? Mm -hmm. So we just had Koto on, and Koto wrote a book on um, inappropriate medley, right, about yeah. her experiences during the war. We have Prof Nangwe, who also talks about the effect, the, the impact the war had on Liberia. The uh, literature or the arts can be very th therapeutic, you know. I always think that it's it's such a shame that Liberia is not using the arts in this healing process. It could be something very simple as having um, a, a, a writing contest or a poetry contest on what does it mean to forgive, right? And people would, would say, well, what does it mean to forgive? It could be something as simple as doing a play, right? Drama on uh, for, uh, 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 forgiveness. Uh, Doris Bang Henry's wrote a, a, a play, right, on the landing of the Panniers. Remember, Prof? Yeah. Yes, I remember that. How they came, they met the indigenous people, mm -hmm. they, they worked together. So theater, like theater is audiovisual, right? And it's role playing. So, so even if you're illiterate, you're watching this thing and you're learning. So you people can act out what's happening in a society through drama, through right? You don't need to even have it in English, you know, just following, you know, if you're talking about, oh, COVID, right? What should you do to avoid COVID? Drama, you could have a drama, right? And people role play. So, so when it comes to how it can bring the society together, artistic things bring society. For example, remember when we were growing up, we used to have floats, right? The different counties used to have this creative process. Yeah where they were designed floats. And that was social cohesion. People came together to do what? To compete. So I would say that the, 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 the arts, it may be um, a forgotten area in our country, yeah. but the effect of using the arts is, is, is manifold. I think that um, it's something that we need to start doing, to start using the arts to tell our story. Yeah. And Jackie, right after the, uh, I think the we call that the first war, and when the university was open, Prof. Namwe had some, uh, we call them the handout, some short stories. They were in those little pamphlets that we were using for, for, for classes. I was not in this class, but my brother was, so I used to read some of those things. <laughs> and they, they I, I, don't, I don't know why, whether, or if he had other people doing the same thing, but he was writing, you know, articles and, and, and things that were pertaining to the war as we were discouraged. I think part of it was from the trauma healing process or something from number you are here. You can talk about some of those things that you, you wrote. I think one of those stories was uh, two brothers that were fighting and then mm -hmm. he fell on them and yeah. they were something like that. I feel kind well, of well, okay. Uh, let's 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 go this way. Um, we were talking about the the case of transformation. Uh, immediately after the military coup, you have Peter Bala and the uh, Flomo Flomo Theater production. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when the the coup occurred, there were a lot of people who wanted to take the law into their own hands, and so. Peter Bala and the Flomo Theater production came on, on the scene. And so many, virtually in, in so many communities, they talk about um, following the law. They talk about uh, kind of restraining the sense of entitlement where you will go somewhere and because you think you want this, they, sh they should give it to you. And if they don't give it to you, you want to what? You want to uh, kind of pounce on people and either beat them up and all that. Even even uh, in some of the schools, there were students who were tying up their teachers. There were teachers who were, uh, there were, there were, there were students who were beating up their principals and what have you. And through, <laughs> uh, yes, and through uh, uh, Flomo Theater, Flomo, the Flomo Theater production, there was some change that came into uh, the society. 
thing about apartheid in South Africa. It was through, through, through songs, it was through the theater that people were able to see a kind of sense in trying as much as possible to be able to live with one another. It took a lot of time in this country called the United States of America, for instance, before people became a little more relaxed with the, the interaction of blacks and whites. Uh, the Roots uh, by Alex Haley. Uh, that whole series of the roots, the uh, the making of uh, the Atlantic slave trade, all the way to six generations of African Americans, that also was able to have an impact on how white people look at uh, black people and black people look at white people. I am not saying. In fact, when you talk about change, especially as it relates to human character, you know that it takes a very long time for for character to change. The best thing literature can do is always create the moment of conversation. So literature can also create the conversation that can impact people's thinking. And through the thinking, people can seek to do whatever is good to be done. Mm. And, and, and those are beautiful examples you give. Do, do we see more or less of that in Liberia from your well, experience? In the case of Liberia, my people, in the case of, as I said, you people are in, in, in trouble. You people have created, the very fact that you even went to school, you have created trouble for yourselves. <laughs> you have, you are in a, a society that is wanting in a lot of what? The exercising of the mind and what have you. You have to be virtually in the marketplace, try as much as possible to bring people to sanity. So this is what, this is the role we have to play in society. That's yeah. our role. We cannot, and, and, we, cannot uh, we cannot regress from it. We have to be there. Yes, Jackie. No, I, I, I um, what, it, what came to mind was um, an article that Tim Nevin wrote, but um, where he talked about a national cultural troop, right? Mm -hmm. a, a troop. And what happened was that when they brought the dancers to live at the at the street, at the center, the national culture center, the director at the time, who was actually a Haitian guy. He kept them separate by 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 ethnicity, right? Mm -hmm. he said, oh, okay, because the Gola dancers, they will not be able to dance the Grebel dances, right? Mm -hmm. He kept mm -hmm. them separate. But when he left and Kona Kashu came, Kona Kashu said, No, they are supposed to learn each other's dances, yeah. right? To yeah. so have shared unity. So they uh -huh. keep so the na national culture troop became like a, a cohesive force. Yes. Also, if you 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 remember, like like, like he said, when they are dancing. What they would say would be like, I am Grebel and I'm a Liberian. I'm yes. and I'm a Liberian. So that yes. was an instrument of cohesion. And and not, of diversity. Yes, unity, and not only yeah. that, but even their dances, right? Even the plays that they had, Dennis, they had uh, uh, the, the King's Una Daughter, Orphan Boy, Moonlight Dance. But all of these were, 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 were morality plays, right? Mm -hmm. you, you learn, okay, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do this, this the other the other way. Even biting more, right? Uh, 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 his literature, his his little novelette is a is a morality mm -hmm. novel, right? See what happens when greed overtakes mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. so, so so if you look at it, Dennis, the, uh, 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 whether it's drama, whether it's lit, uh, whether it's is 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 novels, whatever it, the purpose is to teach a lesson. Because remember when we were discussing, we said that. Unlike the West, where you can just write a novel, the African writer must be committed, mm -hmm. must tell a story. When they're, when they're, when they, when they must tell a story, they must tell one of unity or disunity, but the country or the continent or the race of blacks must always be a part of their story, you know? So I, I think it's a very powerful tool for social cohesion. Uh, probably before you come in, uh, again, we're going back to Liberia. Yeah. I don't believe uh, this is taking center stage, or do you have any contrary view on that? Uh, have we really come to the point of recognizing the power of art and utilize it to report it? Uh, one of the things, one of the things, again, one of the things I, when I hear people ask or talk, uh, about that makes me laugh is that 
They say something like, this thing must be done. <laughs> this thing must be done. <laughs> this this passive voice assertions, we have to be very cautious about them. I'm saying we've got to be cautious about them. I rather someone saying something like, I am about to do this. This thing is not being done in Liberia. We should ask ourselves the question, what are we doing about it? And one thing I do know is one thing I do know is that again it will come back to FOL. You started this thing from scratch. Even at this level, we will say that it is not it is not huge. But the idea that you started it, the idea that you took the first step is very much important, which means that we should never we should never drag our feet on trying to be the one starting the first step. In Liberia, when you have a, an, arts, uh, an arts shop, it is likely that people from, from uh, other places will go. Prof, please unmute yourself. Unmute myself. All right, we have one from Trouble there with Prof. Mike. Professor Number, you can unmute yourself, please. Just by itself. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can. Huh? Yeah. huh? Maybe it's because I, I haven't touched this place yet. So, so what I'm saying is, what are we doing about it? It's part of what we are doing now, which is raising awareness. Even if we have to take, um, even if we have to take uh, commercials uh, on local TVs out there or local radio stations out there, we've got to do that. When did you read today? When did you check an ad shop today? When did you discuss something of a Liberian writer? All these things are very much important. In other words, we have to keep the conversation going. We have to create dialogue. We have to create conversation. We have to be evangelical, if I must say that. We have to become evangelical in whatever we are doing. If people who are in churches, if people who are in the mosque are doing the same thing, it is very much important that we who have gotten the education we must be able to let people know that things are out there for us to what view things are out there for us to converse about it is very much important that we do that that is why i say at some point that hey the very fact that you got an education you are in trouble you have to be able to hold other people's hands and take sometimes even those who say they are educated there are some who are educated and never get into these things here and we must be able to direct them has gotten the education, we must be able to let people know that things are out there for us to watch, things are out there for us to converse about. It is very much important that we do that. That is why I say at some point that, hey, the very fact that you got an education, you are in trouble. You have to be able to hold other people's hands and take, sometimes even though who say they are educated, there are some who are educated and never get into these things yet. And we must be able to direct them. Who have gotten the education? We must be able to let people know that things are out there for us to watch, that are out there for us to converse about. It is very much important. All right. If you just join us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are on the literary hour. Our topic today transforming Liberia through the arts. My co host is Jackie Sayer, and we have guests. Professor K. Moses Nambe. You're talking about the art, Jackie, go ahead. You, you, you have something on your tongue, I can see that. No, I, I was going to say that, you know, uh, um, I was reading uh, um, Stone's article and she said that the, the Pella people say, if you build a town and there is no singer in the town, then it's not a town, right? Mm -hmm. And usually when we go to other, other cities, like if you go to Maryland or you go wherever, the first place you go, or at least the first place I go, is to the museum, right? 
I want to see. I want to see what what the, what their culture is. I want to see their paintings, right? So so the the museum becomes a a microscopic lens, right? Through which I can say, oh, I know this town through this, right? So mm. so if 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 you look at it that way, you would say that well, since the museum tells the story of the town, right? we should ask ourselves as Liberians, what tells our story? If somebody comes here, where will they go? I know when I took my daughter, we went to you look at it that way. You would say that, well, can I go on? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, so we went on Broad Street to the museum. That was the first place we went after we settled because we wanted to see, you know, and I, yeah, I, I think the price is very exorbitant. For, for for the museum, you know, I think it was like $8. I was like, what? You know, but <clears throat> that place should be giving priority. You, you know, Dennis, is, is, I remember one time um, we had a, a colleague at the University of Liberia. She was a professor of English and um, we went to a wedding, right? Of course, you know, this is something we bring with us. At the end, we all stood up to do the grand march, you know? And she was behind me and she said to me, I didn't know you guys do the quadrille. And I said, what's that? You know, she said the quadrille. And so of course, you know, when I came here, I, I realized that uh, it is the quadrille. You know, it's something that we think is very indigenous to Liberia, but it's not, right? It's the Southern Virginia real. That's what it is. That's what we're doing It's not, but we feel that it's, 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 it's indigenous to us. So what I'm saying is that we need to elevate the arts. You know, Ghana has a ministry of tourism, arts and culture, right? Uh, Kenya has a ministry of culture, I think heritage, right? Zambia has a ministry of tourism and arts. I know that they were trying to have a, 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 a separate arm of tourism. I think that if we try to elevate the arts, what we need to do is to look at tourism because it seems as if tourism and culture for some reason seems to go together. And so tourism is the economic wing mm -hmm. of culture, right? But if you want to talk about economics, Dennis, and you say, well, how can arts be profitable, right? All you have to do is look at Nollywood. That's all you have to do, right? Because the other day they said that Nollywood, right? Like the Nigerian movies and the Nigerian mm -hmm. They, they 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 made what eight million in 2010, and this last year or, or the year before 2018, they made 490 million dollars. Mm -hmm. That 490 million, and they uh, and the Nollywood industry is the third largest uh, uh, employer in in Nigeria. Think mm -hmm. that. Wow. That you know. So we need to elevate the arts. We need also the, the arts can be. Uh, an arm of, of 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 patriotic unity, right? We everybody sings "Sweet Liberia," right? And now we have all these other songs. But maybe people can get together and these artists and make a song that we can. You know, I mean, when I'm driving and I feel down, I put on "One Way Ticket to Liberia," right? Or "Sweet Liberia." It takes me back, right? And those are the things that we need to start doing. We need to start. Um, making songs, doing things that will elevate the country. As I said, one of my New Year's resolutions. So we have to elevate. We have to ele elevate the country, and one way of doing that is 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 yeah through the arts. Hmm. And, and let me let me read a few few comments here, and uh, we'll put the comments on the board. In fact, or uh, put them on the screen so people will uh, see. But uh, Prof, you are about to see something. This no. one is for. Uh, okay. uh, Go ahead. Georgie Parji said, is this the author of The Road to Romeo? I read the book in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's uh, Professor Kui Moses, now the author of Road to Romeo and 34 other books. <laughs> uh, that, uh -huh. Who is... <laughs> Jackie, you want me to be there? <laughs> <laughs> this woman, she is well in language. <laughs> well, this is uh, Jackie Sire. 
Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> and uh, Musu uh, is affirming that uh, yes, Plumo Theater did a lot to promote culture and heritage, mm. and that is very true. Prof, what I was trying to uh, bring about is uh, the same way this culture can be powerful in transforming Liberia, it also can uh, give opposite results. It, is it, I think there is a need to guide it. Okay, right now there's a lot of music, right? What if what comes out of this music is bad and it's going to lead people the other way? So it the, caught, uh -huh. so this can it, it can have the opposite effect. That that is the story of the human society. That is if the, the voice of conscience, if the voice of constructive thinking is not loud enough, the other voice will overtake it, and that is that is why the. Uh, uh, I think it was yesterday or a day before yesterday that uh, Jackie uh, made a comment and ended with the Shikori uh, story. The story about the two wolves. Mm -hmm. It will depend on the wolf you feed. The same thing is here. There are often, once you have a diverse society such as ours, you will have competing voices. There will be a contestation of the key voice. And therefore, you who are very much uh, particular about uh, conscientious voices and what have you, or the constructive ways of doing things, you have to try as much as possible. Maybe you can work in silos or work in groups as we talk about, work in groups, but keep making sure that you are always visible. There has to be a sense of visibility there has to be that loud voice. It doesn't have to be all too dramatic so that people get put off by it. But every time you've got to say something about what is happening and how you can deal with it. For instance, uh, in, in the States, uh, America, they have Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson. Mm -hmm. And when that movie came on, there were people, there were several people who got a little more committed to all things religious. The same thing happened in the case of music. When you go to Bob Marley and he talks about stand up for your right, you are about to move and do something about it, something that happened in the 1970s about social change. You can talk about that. Even he talk about war. He says something of the fact that if people are not fighting for equality, if people are not fighting for racial integration, there will always be war. So coming back to what you were saying, uh, uh, Jia, the reality is that there will always be competing voices. Voices of conscience have got to speak a little louder. They have to do mm -hmm. things, even if they have to print banners and all that, t-shirts, caps, and all those things, they have to do them there has to be a concerted effort to make sure that a collective story of what, of good transformation is provided. Hmm. And, and Jackie, we were talking about Malibu having, generating some money, Black Panther generated how many billion? I think one billion. So ads can be used for that. But uh, to, to Prof, Prof Namway that uh, it, it comes to, voice or our voices being louder. What do we see happening in Liberia currently? Is 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 the voice of the voice of conscience you're talking about being drawn out? Or is anybody hearing it? It's it's being it is it's, it's being drowned. It's being drowned. Especially you know like I talk about trash music. If you if people are engaged in trash music, oh I don't like your trash, oh I don't like your trash that 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 doesn't say much. There has to be there has to be uh, an undergirded deep philosophy to some of these songs, to some of these stories and all that. You were talking about uh, stories that came almost immediately after the war. Uh, we had this series, the OYSS series, Ordinary Yet Significant Series. Uh, Sister Lorraine Brown, uh, K. Moses Nagbe, I think uh, one Hester Williams, and another person. Uh, Almost immediately after the war, we sat down and said, well, why don't we tell stories that are going to improve upon the human character in this society? 
this is where literature or the art as uh, character formation becomes very much important. So that's when a lot of those stories were being told. Uh, I, I, I remember I had a, a story that had to do with uh, money is cheap and uh, never again pagono. Now, money is cheap. I say, well, not everything that you do in society, you expect money. And if you go about your life like that, then definitely you will not do anything good for anybody. So that story too was able to get that. So the short of the long is that we have a long way to go and how we start it should be something like there has to be some level of purpose, some big word which is intentionality. There has to be a purpose to it. And once we understand the purpose to what we are doing and how we are doing it, then definitely we will be able to will be able to ensure that what we want to achieve is achieved, which is a positive what transformation, positive transformation. You are watching the Literary Hour, our topic for discussion, transforming Liberia through the arts. And when we talk about transformation, every society means that starting with the character, mm -hmm. integrity, honesty, yes. the people, mm -hmm. life needs to be transformed. And then the arts encompasses literature, the visual arts. You yeah. talk about, you know, everything in between yeah. consists of the art. And we want Liberia to transform. Jackie, why do we want Liberia to transform? And, and what would that transform Liberia look like? It's necessary to have Liberia transformed. Uh, we cannot stay where we are. We do not want to go back to where we were. So we have to make where we are going a better place. So for example, you know, I, I, when I was listening to Prof Nangwe and I was thinking about the songs, you know, and I guess people will say, but what's wrong with the songs? You know, they, they even sing these kinds of songs in the United States. The United States have options. You don't like the song? You can flip to another song, you can go to the library, you can go to the museum. We don't have a lot of options in Liberia, you know? So we hear these songs and we be and we're like, oh, what one of the one of the good things that's coming out of our country is um that so many of our songs now are, are being sung in the in the in the traditional language, which is a good thing. Uh, one of, I would say, a masterpiece, right? Is Sonny Gardier Boys, uh, oh, yeah. uh, what is it called? Bosade, uh -huh. right? Because if you listen to that song, it's about legacy, right? The heritage. Yeah, okay. is, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I listen to it and I really like it and I, I like the meaning behind it. And if you want to know how the arts can appeal to people, listen to the song, right? Because it's saying that Nyonga Lawrence is our legacy, is our heritage, right? And, and, and that Bromsky has given her to the Basa people, right? And, and you, you see the identifying with the song that she is ours, right? This person belongs to us because the person who's gone on before has given her to us. So a, a music, the arts can be a force of cohesion, can be a force of good, right? So I would say that if we are talking about moving, transforming our country, or we want a new constitution, we want a new this, I would say, let's take the case of South Africa. In South Africa constitution, right? South Africa's constitution, it says that the languages of the country are a cultural resource and they have to be protected at all costs, right? And when you go to South Africa, that you will see people speaking perfect English and they will switch like that. You know, and then they come back to England, then they switch like that. And it's all over the southern region. And it's because during the the, 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 the fight for, for, for the end of apartheid, the, 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 the ANC fighters move around, right? So they all speak the same language. So you can't really tell who is who, you know, in the Sadic region, because they all speak the same language. You go to Zambia, it's Tonga, but they speak. You will see a South African, he she will speak Zulu, Tonga, Bemba, Hausa, you know, and, and so you see that it's they, they have said we will transform our country. And one of the elements of transformation is our native languages, right? So you can get the constitution in all the languages, right? As I was mm -hmm. saying the other day, Dennis, you can ask somebody for the constitution in Hausa and they'll tell you, they'll give it to you. If you look at why it is necessary, it is necessary because we don't want to go back, right? And I will tell you, 
a very interesting thing. When I was in South Africa, I went to the Constitutional Court. And on the Constitutional Court, on the wall, they have Constitutional Court in English. And then they have Constitutional Court in all of the languages in South Africa. They have it in Bemba, they have it in Zulu. So you, so if, you, if, a, if someone comes from the village and they can't read English, they say, oh, this is the Constitutional Court. And not only do they have the Constitutional Court, when you go into that court, what do they have? They have a huge leopard skin, right? The chairs are all leopard skin and zebra skin, right? And then where is the Constitutional Court built? It's built on the side of the old prison. The old prisons are there, right? And so what happened? They took some of the, of the bricks from the old prison and they built steps leading to the new Constitutional Court. And then th what they did, they put windows down so the judges, they can only see the feet of the people who are passing as it should be. They don't need to see the race. They see. It. So what I'm saying is that we need to start integrating some mm. of these things into our country. We need to start, you know, one of the, 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 the poignant things that always makes me cry when I go to the Constitutional Court in South Africa is this piece of blue, uh, um, what is it, blue plastic, right? That blue plastic was what when they when they when they when the white soldiers were killing this black woman, they had her naked, right? She was naked. And to hide her nudity, she saw a, a blue plastic bag and she pulled that plastic bag to cover herself. And that painting is in the South African court to say, we will remember. So what we need in Liberia going forward is for us to have a coming together. Yes, we are moving to this new place, but we don't want to. We want to forget maybe some of the horrific things, but we want to remember some so we don't go back to it. So I think it's very important that we do have a museum, a museum of what happened, remembrance of what happened, things that happened, you know, and then we move on. And to move on, Dennis, will be a coming together of all the stakeholders to say, this is where we want our country to be. And arts, arts ha they ha has a very important part in moving that country forward. <laughs> and uh, talking about that, and you, you, you cover a lot of ground. So let me, let me uh, bring us to a few things that you said there about the language. You also talked uh, in the language, we, when we were growing up, when I was growing up, in fact, speaking your language was a problem. Your, your, your birth tongue was a problem. And sometimes, uh, even on campuses, there was a dollar police. We also, since the war, we don't have a war museum. We tend, uh, if you talk about the war too much, it means you are not letting bygones to be bygones. Also, uh, there is a divide, an elite, or some call it country that we are not supposed to talk about because it's divisive. In fact, using our birth names at some time, but from what you are saying, Jackie, these are all component things that we can use for healing and for the transformation we're talking about here. That's the yes. art. Yes. So yes. Because, these are the challenges. How do we meet them? The, again, let us keep in mind that in talking about transformation, we are talking about the physical, we are talking about the psychological, we are talking about attitudes and behaviors. So that broad range is very much important, especially when it comes to behaviors and attitudes. Literature can work on that. And even the arts as a broad concept can work on behavior and attitudes. So whatever we are doing, if there are ways in which we can a kind of integrate the themes, the themes, whether it's of, uh, of paintings we are talking about, we're talking about songs, we're talking about stories and all those, we've got to keep in mind that literature and the arts do have a significant role to play in all this. And the question of how we go about that, I told you that we have to become evangelical. And this is, this is you know, uh, no offense to the religious groups. I'm talking about this. In other words, the same attitude, and even you can talk about in epidemiology, 
uh, talking about uh, health sciences, there has to be an evangelical type to it, which is what we are talking about now when, when we talk about COVID. People have to go from house to house. People have to be on the radio. People have to be uh, on uh, TV channels and what have you to preach the message of staying well, to preach the message of cleaning hands and all that kind of a thing. The same thing has got to come to the arts. Nobody is going to do that for us. We who understand these things must be able to provide opportunities or to find opportunities within which we will talk about them, explain them. And that is why, that is how we are going to get to some place. And it happened when I was uh, teaching in a village in Guinea, the refugee school. Okay. There was a song, you know, anytime we, and this was a Pella area. So we teach in the health science class, we had songs that we were singing. And so what we probably did was to translate those songs into Pella into the local language because when the kids go home, yeah. they will sing those songs and their parents will hear. So one of those songs was mosquitoes are causing malaria. Mosquitoes are causing malaria. Okay. What should we do to prevent mosquitoes? It said, cover your door, okay. uh, clear the waters, and all these things. So the kids went home and started singing those songs. Okay. Okay. The parents took them out and they were, were, you know, so children were implementing those things that we were teaching and it was yes. very, very effective. Mm -hmm. and, and I could sing those fellow songs too. But we yes. have a few, um, few comments here we want to read. There are some suggestions. Uh, uh, our man, G Play, is saying we need a museum, definitely. But it's out there, isn't it? Except to improve on it. Yeah. Translate the Liberian Constitution or laws into the 16 tribes or the 16 languages of Liberia. Uh, thanks, Professor K. Moses Mabe, for the salient point. That's uh, Jebo again. Uh, Musu Wanglo Stewart, preservation is important as well. We need to stop destroying artifacts and preserve history and heritage. The Ghanaians were destroying their museum until they came to themselves. Right now, the castles are breaking in millions of dollars. Yes. Jibley uh, also is saying, this is very important, informative show. And let me put a, a, a little longer comment here. I want to read that. From Willie Bandy Kamara, this talk show is very much appreciated and interesting, but the issue is implementation of the best ideas we propound and envision. Liberians of all professionalism and expertise must uh, rescue uh, Liberia. We continue to be filled people, disorganized people, and people not united for productivity and progress. Liberians must make the choice to make Liberia better for all of us. This okay. is uh, who, 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 who wrote this? Yeah. Is, is, is he a Lunia? No, Willie Kamara. Is, is he a Sierra Lunia? Or, or he, is, he is a Ghanaian? No, he's a Liberian, but he's okay. a right. I, I see, I see you where see, you're going. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. What, as an individual, sometimes it comes to a point where one individual is a majority. You see? Wherever, wherever yeah. life, yeah. wherever yeah. life, come again. How can one individual be a majority? Explain that. Sometimes one individual can become a majority by the visibility of the person's voice, by the visibility of that person's action. Over time, it becomes what? It, be, it, it becomes uh, epidemic. It becomes yeah. epidemic. It's like you sneeze. And everybody catches that cold. That's what it is. We have to get out of that thing about Liberians need to do this. What are you doing? What are you doing? About one person being a majority, one example that comes to mind right now, currently in Liberia, is the name Henry Costa. Uh huh. That one, that one voice has become a majority. So I agree with you. Sad, sadly, sadly, you know. That voice, if you're hearing that, let then that's a challenge to you. Sadly, that voice is always talking about, oh, this person is not doing that, that other person. Does. What are you yourself doing? I agree. There are times we have to hold people's feet to the fire. But the thing about it is sometimes when you overdo it, people get tired of you. 
try as much as possible to be in the constructive business. Be in the constructive business. How many people can we hear about that have little reading groups in Liberia? Reading to children. Do we have reading programs in that place there where someone can pick up to you, even if you do five, ten children every Saturday afternoon or something like that or Saturday evening? One of the reasons why so many people from rural Liberia, someone like myself, for instance, I know so many folk tales is that virtually every evening as a place, as a point of relaxation, people told stories. Can you get people to read to other children so that the children can get so excited and go about reading to other people? So many little things we think are nothing but are something. Again, it comes back to FOL. That is why I think that FOL is doing a good job. See where you started from and see where you are gradually going. This is very much important. We should, do not, we should not live in passive voice construction. We should live in active voice construction. I am doing this. No, this thing has to be done. And, and, and Jackie, before, before you come in, Sam Wallace said the example I gave about Henry Costa was the wrong example. Uh, and Sam, I, I, one, one voice being the majority, that was a perfect example. What the voice is used for, that can be debated. But I think that's an example that came to mind. I think it was very good. Jackie. Oh, you're asking me whether it's right or wrong? <laughs> no, you, there, there, are, there are a few comments that I read. If you had anything to say in response to those comments. Oh, um, well, I would I would say like 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 uh, Prof Nangwe say, uh, said that you know, you know, Dennis, it comes back again to what we're talking about cultural heritage. And I will I will I will tell you about the cultural shock when I like I said when I when I when I go to Southern Africa, these people speak perfect English, and when I say perfect English, I mean the Queen's language. I don't mean American English. And within a twinkling of an eye, they can switch into their language, into their, 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 um, their, their different languages. They can be speaking, a minister will be speaking, giving a speech. And within a second, he will start speaking his, his, his native tongue, uh, in, indigenous tongue. So I guess for me, I think that there is a, there is a block, there's a stumbling block you know, in moving forward with our cultural heritage, because some of us still, some of, some of us as Liberians still think that it's something to be to be ashamed of. And it is not, you know. And if you, I mean, you know, you know how <laughs> when we were growing up, we had National Costume Day, right? Yeah. We would wear our, we would wear African clothes, and it was called National Costume. It was called Costume Day. How is that possible? So. When people travel, right, during the war, when people travel, they came back, people started wearing African clothing and saying, oh, you know, you know, even the clothing itself, Dennis, if you look at it, I, I always say that even the people who sew our clothes, they are artists. Because if you take your, your, your African fabric to an American tailor, they'll just sew it anyway. The, 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 the African tailors, they have an art in positioning the different designs, you know, you look at it, you be like, oh, because they, if there's a there's a design, you know what I'm talking about, a uh, yeah. design here or here. So that's artistry in itself. Dennis, I think that as a people, there's a lot of discussion that needs to go on. And one of the discussion is a frank acknowledgement of where we've come from, of how we've hampered the growth of our culture by shunning certain elements, you know, and 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 uplifting the things that we call civilized culture. Now yeah. the word is default. Now people don't use it, but I hear people in Liberia using it. Civilized. So what is civilized? So when you start to discuss, what is this thing called civilized? Is it not civilized to do this? Is it not civilized to do that? Is it not civilized to pick herbs and boil it? But yes, we go and buy Chinese herbs. It's the same thing. Is it not civilized? civilized to eat with our hands but yet we see other people doing it it's the same thing so until we can look inward and say what is hampering me from joining these others to say this is our culture 
this is what we brought with us. This is what we will strengthen and this is what we'll take with us. There will always be a problem. So I think that um, I think that what we need to do as a people, unfortunately, I think that society in general, unless culture brings money, you know, they don't look at it. So they look at culture and tourism. So they kind of group it together, tourism, culture. So they bring the tourists and they tell people, stand there and dance, do a little dance. But that's not culture. That's that's putting on a show, you know? So on, yeah, until yeah. You, you, you start to define what culture means to you and to the country, yeah. you know, and that this is necessary for us to be proud of who we are, we're not going to go anywhere, you know? Yeah. We're going to stay. And, and it takes one person. It takes several people. But we have to move this move this along. And, and Jackie, you talk about African costume. They, even now, they still do that. And uh, in Liberia, you have something they call a traditional wedding. Huh? Oh, well, well, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> traditional wedding. You know, I mean, yeah. it's a wedding. It doesn't have to be traditional. You don't have to put it. What we used to do is a wedding. It is oh. us. But for anything that belongs to, in fact, when I the days we called normal day, there was a segment on the radio show called Liberian music. So everything else, so everything that had to do with Liberian is put in some subcategory, as if we are separate from Liberia because that's us, that's our culture. But in other, and that goes back to a, a point where we had to graduate from being ourselves. You know, if you were born speaking Gribo, you have to graduate from there, else your civilization will be questioned. Yeah, yeah, and civilization, as they say. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, even, even, even if you, I mean, if you even look at it, Dennis, you know, even now, you know, I, and I said that to you before, if you're talking about culture or, or something that's moving like you're forward, it's not politics. Nobody listens to you. Nobody comes to your show. You know, the minute you say politics right now, you have 300 people listening, you know, but yet arts is also politics. Right, you you you're learning about getting along with people. You're learning about 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 what these people do as a people. You know, I, I will tell you a story, and you know, as a as a writer, I like telling stories. But let me tell you something. The first time I went to South Africa, right, and as an African, really, when you go to any African country, it's like you're at home. So we were on the bus. We're going with the students. We're going to Limpopo, right? We're going to this resort. We stop at a at a uh, what is it called? We stop at a rest area, and I, I so that we, we we each had a bag lunch, right? We had a bag lunch, each one of us, and I, I I had my bag lunch in the van. We came, we got out of the van, and we sat down, and then I saw a group of ladies, you know, ladies who like they were the ones who they had on uniform, so they were like the maids, they cleaned the, the rest area, and they were sitting under the tree. Dennis, I walked over to them. I opened the bag, I put the food on the table, on the, on the grass, and I said, oh, apple, orange, juice, bread. I'm like, ah, I don't like the apple. And the woman, she's like, I like apple. And this other woman, and when you look, and I said, let's cut the bread. And we sat there eating, and we sat there talking, and you know, Southern Africans don't know a lot about West Africa, and they said, where are you from? And I said, Liberia, and I was talking to them. And when I was done, I got in a van, right? The other lady who was in the van with me, she said to me, oh, so I thought this was your first time coming to South Africa. I said, it is my first time. She said, but where did you know them from? I said, no, I don't know them. I said, but I went to go share my lunch with them. And then she said something that would tell you how, how cultures are different. She said to me, oh, the, other, the, the two other people in the van with us, they finished eating, but they have some of their bread and things left over. Let me give, go take it and give it to them. I said, you can't do that. You cannot eat and then take what you have eaten to give it to them. Because that is wrong. You know, I mean, those were not kids. So what I'm saying is that there's a commonality that we have, that we know that, okay, this is wrong. This is right. It's wrong. You know, and 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 when we went to Soweto, I was walking, and there was this little girl walking behind me, and I just grabbed her and put her on my hip, and we're going to the uh, reading room, and the the other student, the American student, said, "Oh, where's her mother? Do you know her?" 
I don't have to know her. She was walking behind me. She's a child. She's going the same place. So what I'm saying is that we need Dennis. There's a commonality of culture. There's a commonality of heritage that needs to be elevated. And until we can do that, we will always be in this waiting place. So until the, I would say the government, the people, us, decide that, you know, we are going to elevate our culture. We're going to elevate the arts. We're going nowhere, you know, as a people. Hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is focused on Liberia on our literary hour. Our topic, transforming Liberia through the arts. Our guest, Professor K. Moses Namwe, my co-host is Jackie Sayer. Let's, uh, we are way you know, into our time, so let's come to our next steps. Uh, probably keep saying that, uh, you know, what each of us can do. Yes, that is true. But the job is so big that it, 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 it needs a little more. What should be the next step? What can we do to see this Liberia transform? What does ordinary people have to do? What does the government have to do? What does uh, the diaspora Liberians have to do? What does everybody have to do to transform Liberia through the arts as we, as we wind down? Okay. Um. We, we started saying that the arts uh, relate to literature, the arts relate to paintings, the arts relate to music. In general, the arts is the seat of life, of a nation, life of a people. There are certain things that require behavior and attitudes. We should be able to create uh, the environment to see how we transform behaviors and attitudes. For instance, uh, are you someone who uh, feel embarrassed wearing your local uh, clothing, local attire? Are you someone who uh, gets embarrassed if you are wearing your secretary uh, uh, neck? How do they call it? The thigh neck? Do you get with the embroidery and all that? Are you someone or are you someone who get embarrassed wearing a gown? That is another thing you have to think about. Are you someone, if I know where life places you, sometimes you may not have had the opportunity to learn a local language, but are you someone who takes sufficient interest in that so that when someone speaks, you want to kind of understand what that person is saying with kind of real excitement or enthusiasm? Are you someone like that? Do you have a, a reservoir of proverbs every now and then whenever you are speaking, you want to add a thing about or use? Such are things. What about even your diet? Do you sometimes include your local uh, meal? Like, uh, do you like eating uh, uh, flour sauce? Do you like eating pasajama, uh, cassava leaf? Do you like eating... Uh, Spanish, do you, ha you like eating palm butter? Or when you are somebody who, when you pick up crab, you hold it with two fingers on the, the whole thing falls into your lap and you say, that's why I don't, I don't like eating crab. Is that what you want to do? In other words, it is the food. It is the music. It is the clothing. It is the language. Even in the refined form, something of even uh, Liberian English and what have you. All these things are important. Wherever you are, be able to be someone who can spark off conversation in that direction. And if you are government, if you are some person, how many how many uh, people in the government cycle can uh, help support writers? I know you know people like to support music because sometimes they put their name in the music. Therefore, they would want to pay two hundred forty thousand dollars for that. But how many people, literature, huh? 
reading materials. How many people can sponsor research into that? So the short of the long is that, yes, as you started saying, uh, Brother Jeff, everyone has a part to play in it. If you want to be proud of other people's culture, other people's way of life, uh, good for you. But I think at the center of it all, you need to be proud of your own country, your own way of life and all that kind of thing. And that will be the beginning of what we have to do. What you are doing here, which is the FOL, I will always come back to it. If you have to probably, I don't know, uh, so many things, you have so many sessions for politics. But to have just this one session for, for things related to literature, I know you may be stressed on resources and what have you. You have, yes, you have to, if it's going to be twice, you know, it has to be that way. And if people have to every now and then come in, so much the better. But like I said, we have to be evangelical about it. Hmm. Thank you. Let me read a few comments and then Jackie, you come in. Okay. Uh, let me ask our people in the back room to put those comments on the screen. A few comments. Uh, uh, Jiple Chebo, we are confused in that country, talking about Liberia, about our heritage because we want to like like Westerners and we are non-Anglo-Saxons. We are Africans. Imanuel mm. uh, Jise, we are West, we were Westernized, Christianized and mentally conditioned to neglect our values. Mm. Dr. Dupe Chris Yan, most librarians equated Western education to being civilized, ignoring the fact that we civilized, we are civilized based on the rich tenets of our culture. And also, uh, Chepo is agree with Jackie here. Uh, agree, our art is very important to our survival as a people. Thanks for that point, Jackie. Yeah. Everything in Liberia is politics. The country is too much politics, politics, nonsense. Yeah. And uh, Willie Kamara is back saying, you are very correct, senior communist civilization is not necessarily westernization. It is the recognition and appreciation of our cultural heritage and cultural capital. Mm -hmm. Those are the few comments. Mm -hmm. Most of us agree. Most of us, I think you agree with me. Oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, I hope that's me. Jackie? I Our think, question. Dennis, one of, one of the things that we must understand is that different does not mean lesser. I think Many people think that when it says different, it means that you're lesser. You're not. Lesser simply, I mean, di different simply means you're different. Right. Different cultures. You're not lesser. So there's no reason to equate Western culture with some superior culture. You know, it, it, you, uh, uh, um, I, I tell people, look, my daughters always say, we have so many aunties and uncles. Because I said to them growing up, you're not going to call anybody by their first name. <clears throat> if they're older than you, that's Uncle Ta uh, Uncle Tom. You know, that's Uncle Uncle Nangbe, Uncle Dennis. He is not your 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 crowd. You know, and a lot of times people think that culture is stagnant. It's not. It's movable. But there are some elements. You know, one of the elements of our culture is respect. You know, if I go home now, I still if my 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 two older aunties go in a room to say something and I'm there, I get up and leave because it's not for my ears. I'm not there to listen. So you know how many homes I've been in Liberian homes where I'm there and we're talking about people and talking about things and they, their child is right next there playing games. You know, they don't even greet you when you're coming in and like, oh, that, that's the American way. No, I, I know, Dennis. I brought my kids up because I said to myself, when I grew up, was I brought up the right way? Yes. And if you don't doubt the way you were brought up, you will bring your kids up that way, you know? So we have to question ourselves, is what I keep saying when I say, what is your truth? If your truth is your culture and you say, look, yeah, they used to maybe yell at me at this, but I grew up good, right? You will respect that culture. I'm not saying that, it, that I've like your culture is perfect. It's not. There are some things we have to get rid of through the, you know, change, right? But Again, I will come back that it is necessary for our survival 
as a people to elevate ourselves through the arts and our culture. It is necessary because as Franz Fanon says, you cannot be another people, right? All you're gonna be is a carbon copy of that, of that group. And if you're a carbon copy, Dennis, the carbon copy is never as clear as the original. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're copying another culture. And most of the time, you're copying the bad elements of that culture. You are not, you are just a carbon copy of that culture. So mm -hmm. I, I would say that we need to uplift our culture. We need to have a place so that when people come to Liberia, we say, you know what? Go to our museum. See who we are as a people. Go to our, uh, they have a Holocaust museum. Go to our, 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 our Civil War Museum, see what we went through as a people, you know? And, and, and through that, I think we have a greater appreciation of who we are, you know? And like, like Prof. Nangwe said, it may be that we would have two people listening to us, Dennis. It may be that we will have five people one day. But if we continue this conversation and somebody tells somebody else and somebody tells somebody else, it's not always going to be politics. Somebody will listen and say, oh, you know, what Professor Nangwe said was right. What I heard on Focus on Liberia was right. Because we cannot just have politics 24 hours a day. We cannot, you know? There, there is a, you know, education is very important. That's why by, you know, the help of the support of, from all of you, we try to uh, make a conscious decision to say, well, we, we're going to cover other things besides politics because it's very important. Uh, because the education that this uh, kind of forum provides is very important to counter the narrative out there. You know, I uh, and Jackie was talking about using hands. There are some who see uh, uh, Americans, for instance, and say, oh, you are using your hands to eat this, and they look at it different. So I ask them, how do you eat your pizza? How do you eat your fries? Do you use a fork or do you use a spoon? Okay, and then you, they look at you, 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 you're swallowing GB and they have a problem with it. You know, oh, how do you swallow and you don't chew it? How do you eat your ice cream? Do you chew it? Yes. So education that we provide, education that comes as a result of this kind of discussion is very important because it gives people also the tools to say something back to someone who tried to demean you or someone as a problem number was saying, who is not proud of wearing the quinte or wearing the vice shirt because you think somebody is going to repudiate you or look at you differently and you have no counter. You are in a class, one of the best papers that I've written in my school year is when I talk about my village. But if I try to copy and talk about, you know, the modern cities and talk about Chicago, I'm not going to go very far because someone who was born in Chicago is going to write that better than I do. Let you, me, you, know, you know, Dennis, I, I, I mean, just before, you, I just wanted to say that, you know, when you talk about the power of one person, right? Yeah. My professor is sitting right next to, well, virtually sitting right next to me, right? And Professor Nangwe was one of my professors at, at the University of Liberia who, 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 who taught me the beauty of culture, right, through, through his courses. So if you want to talk about one person influencing another, that's Prof. Nangwe and one of his students. I'm right here, and you are his student also. So thank you, Professor Nangwe. <laughs> and, then, and, and, then each, and, and then each one of you have so many students too. <laughs> exactly. there, are, there, are two, there are two things I want to suggest here. Uh, we're talking about the role of government. God helps us if they are interested. <laughs> uh, we we can have annual conferences. The annual conferences we can have one reflecting on the cultural aspects of our country. Maybe we can add that there or separate this one. I'm about to uh, suggest the the government should make it. And that can go through the Ministry of, of Information, Culture and Tourism. We can have annual, the Information Ministry and the Education Ministry. We can have annual uh, book exhibition on Liberian writings. Yes. That is another way we can kind of do the cultural re-engineering as we are talking about here. If that thing is constant, 
whenever it is coming up, people will gear themselves towards that, and that can eventually those in the diaspora and say have young children on such occasions can take some of their children back there to see what is over there. In some form, it is done in Ghana. In some form, it is done in Nigeria and all that. But if we make a cultural conference and a, and a cultural exhibition, I mean, a books exhibition, literary exhibition, we might call it, annually, those things, there has to be something to excite us. There has to be something to motivate us. That is what I'm talking about. And if it is an occasion, a, a an occasion of permanence and persistence, we are going to get somewhere. Hmm. That, that's 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 one way of, of making sure that we, we keep to these things. Okay, let, let me read a, a very long comment here and then we can uh, wrap up. Close, close on this one. Let me see from the back room, we can put a very, okay. Oh, it's coming from our friend Willie again, Willie Bandy Kamara. There is the urgent need of, for unity of purpose for all Liberian professionals, intellectual class, political and economic elite. But what we continue to see is division, antagonism, and lack of unity of purpose. We must purposefully reverse this. One way to reverse this is to start an organization of Liberian professionals, economic and intellectual class to brainstorm our current state of affairs and a way forward. We must identify all best minds in all in all areas of youth endeavors and allow that to, to happen. All right, that's the... Um, <laughs> we have the Liberian Studies Association. <laughs> right. We, uh, uh, Emmanuel Jesus said, decolonizing programs allow traditional clothing to be used as school uniform, teach the 16 vernaculars in school, teach traditional medicine in school, you know, so one time I wrote a I wrote an article called "Civilization the Way We Knew It." Dr. Chris Young said the government needs to create the enabling condition and environment for promoting of our culture. This is a major task that we cannot, that cannot be done by an individual. Huh? You are right about that. Dave just said there was an in, there was an intentional ploy to commit cultural genocide for over a century from 1816 onward. However, I am confident that there is hope for the future from people like you and many others who are committed to cultural liberation. Dave say what? Cultural genocide? <laughs> Dennis, Jada, and Dr. K. Moses, now for your information, I have started to compile a list of Liberian professionals of all endeavors with the aim of convening an all Liberian conference of professionals to deliberate on the state of our country and the way forward. I'm currently working on this. Thank you so much, Willie, for that. All right. What I was saying, uh, I wrote an article before civilization the way we knew it. One way, when I was growing up, I saw civilization that you are civilized if you cannot speak your language. You are civilized if you cannot do those things you did before. For instance, if you can dance uh, chocolate anymore, or you can do my phone then you are considered civilized. <laughs> you are also civilized if you travel outside the country. Whether you went there as a slave and came back, you are considered civilized. And so that's why I saw some grand uncles who were former slaves from Penadopo. When they came back, they were royals. And so today we see something like our allegiance to some imaginary group called the international community. Everything we want them to have a say so. If you have a church and there is no branch of that church in America, then you're not a church. So all alone, instead of our father who are in heaven, we are praying our father who is in America. So all <laughs> these things are part of the, the way, called, maybe that's the cultural genocide that Dave is talking about. <laughs> no, so, the, all the ideas that people have expressed, uh, Dr. Yan, Brother Kamara, you know, uh, Yase, they are all uh, big ideas. They are very important. They are big ideas. Uh, and they should be given consideration, especially because those are aspirational. Those are aspirational. And, and so you cannot discount any one of them. But I continue to hope. 
I continue to hold that what two, three, four, or five people can begin and work on can at some point have meaningful impact than when they just sit around and say, let this big entity, this big government, or let this government or other people, so many people come around before things are done. That's for me, that's what I see. I know it is it is good to be aspirational, and yet, uh, when, what 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 do we say in Liberia? They say they say dry meat sweet, mm. but what would be eaten before the dry meat? <laughs> that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Yeah, dry meat, you know, <laughs> uh, dry meat to, to to dry the meat require what patience and all that one day. But mm. can we wait for that that moment when we? get the dry meat in our hands to eat, we have to begin somewhere. Here we are, three, four, or five, we can begin the conversation. And every now and then, given resources, this thing can increase to two uh, times weekly. We can do those little things. And over time, they will say, but wait a you can Look at, before we close, look at what, what people do in advertisement. The advertisement comes once, then you call up your radio. Then it comes again. Then you cut off the radio. By the time it gets to the fifth one, the sixth one, say, but what kind of thing they always advertising in this place here? This thing they advertising, this thing they advertise. Let me go and try it. You see what I'm talking about? So uh, we, we, we need to keep working at things, even as few as we are. God willing, something big can come over time. That's what I'm, that's what I see. And in my little uh, life, that's, that's what I've seen as a little, you know, one or two chapters in my success stories, that's what I've done. I don't wait for what sweat. I start working and then a sweat will come. All right. Th thank you. Let's uh, thank you so much. And we want to uh, thank our viewers also. Let's conclude with our final thoughts, our topic, transforming Liberia through the art. The key words there, transforming Liberia, the arts. Jackie, your final thoughts. Um, Dennis, I, I, as as I said before, you know, we have we need to have a discussion. Um, we, you know, it's interesting that for a country that says that it was never colonized, we have one of the most colonized group. Um, we 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 tend to view everything from the United States as good. We tend to to feel that Western ideals and values are much better than ours, which is not the case. And as I said, lesser does not mean, I mean, uh, different does not mean lesser. It just means that you're different. So let's uphold our differences. Let's elevate our culture, you know? And and um, as, as I said, you know, like N Nigeria, when Nigeria started doing the, the Nollywood and things, people were like, what, what, what is this? What kind of African movie, as they call it? And now it's, it's grossing 400 million 500 million is employing millions of people. So I would say that let's uphold our, our culture. Let's be very proud of our culture and let's not shun things that hold us together. The, uh, our culture, our heritage, the arts, they are all cohesive elements that can be used for good to move our country. Yeah. Prof? Yeah. yeah. The thing about the arts and uh, literature and the arts, it, it's a complex uh, subject. And yet, we each have to uh, find a spot in that broad concept. We each have to find a spot to call our own and then find someone, then another one, then another one. Then even if we begin in silos, in small groups, and are persistent and consistent about it, eventually something meaningful is gonna come. We can have that aspirational thing, that big dream, nothing is wrong with that, but we should not hedge if we have to begin with a baby step. Over time, things are going to work out well. No society stays the same. It evolves. Yes. We cannot sit by and let yes. Liberia 
go on by itself. It requires yes. all of us, our collective effort, and also as individuals, yes. to do the transformation that we're talking about. And one of those areas is through yes. the art, the food we eat, yes. the dances, our music, yes. the, the way we greet people. Right, the way we numb the fingers. The, the, yes. the, the way we um, we address people, the way we eat our mm -hmm. point and other, the way we yes. treat people, all of this we say the art literature can help transform Liberia. And that's the aspiration of all of us. Yes. But from what I'm hearing tonight, draw me the suit. That the aspiration that uh, we we will get Liberia will be transformed, and that this uh, Michael government, as Professor Nambu said. If they are listening to us, God help us. <laughs> we'll do it, but we each do the little we can. Uh, when I was growing up in the village, almost everyone who passes along in the village, we stop them to tell us stories. Today, I know a lot of stories, a lot of uh, proverbs that have accumulated over time mm -hmm. because somebody told me a story. So read a book to somebody. Mm -hmm. Have a little reading room. Yes. Besides any uh, other things, send books to Liberia. Mm -hmm. You know, download some uh, some books. You put down a jump drive and give it to somebody in Liberia. Mm -hmm. All these little things will help, and we can help transform our country through art. Liberia is the only thing we have, and that's why we never close our broadcast without playing the song. We are all Liberian. Whether you love the art or you are from a chemistry background, whatever you come from. Whether you are, as they say, not in liberal opposition or no position or <laughs> government position, we are all like you. And sometimes we forget our own professional background because politics tend to dominate every aspect of our lives. And I don't blame politics. Politicians make their area attractive. <laughs> that is law for us as teachers, as uh, writers, as lawyers, as chemists, to make our area attractive too so that people will come to it. The evangelism that uh, Professor Nabe talked about, we need to evangelize. We need to talk more of the things that we love to do. But if we allow politicians to make their area attractive and we keep whining about it, we keep crying about it, or we leave our professions, the things that we have studied for years, because the, green, the grass is greener on the political side or on the senator side, then we are the one that is making our own area barren, like I said before. They know about the home mentality. When they come knocking on that door for a writer, for an author, but because you left to be a senator because it makes more money, then there is nobody home. So when Labrador falls tomorrow, we all take the blame. On that note, I want to say thank you so much, Professor Nambu. DJ. Thank you. DJ. Thank you. Yes, sir. DJ. But I, I know you're coming to go, but can you make, make, make banners? I mean, make what do you call this, Jackie? Make uh, bracelet. You call it race band? Yeah. Make race band. F O L race band, and let anybody who is uh, prescribing, I mean, subscribing to this thing, let that person buy it for even one dollar. Make a race band. That's a way of raising money. You need money. Thank you. F O L F O L. Put it support what support F support F O L. If you are interested, in, anybody who comes here must be able to show one of those. To say that <laughs> I am subscribing, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Make sure to do those banners. If you, if you, just let's see how it is done, and then we can we can contribute to it so that you make a lot of those rich bands. If you come here, you must be able to show one of those. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah,